Hello everyone and welcome back to the shop. Today I'm working on an Echo PB770 backpack blower. Customer brought this unit in stating the throttle was not working. I did verify that the cable is broken. This is something that does happen quite a bit with these blowers and I do replace several a year. If you've never replaced one of these yourself, they are fairly easy to do, but they can be a little bit tedious due to the design. In just a second, I'll bring in and we'll start tearing this apart. Okay, so to start, as I've stated in previous videos, I like to work on these backpack blowers on their back like this. It really does help me a lot when I'm taking it apart. One thing is with these Echoes is there's so many screws that hold this engine cover on. It helps to keep all of these screws in place as I take it off. So the first thing that I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and take the air cover off. And get this out of the way. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and start removing all the screws. Now the recoil itself, you do not need to remove. It's only the other screws. You've got one here, you've got one here, and then you've got the four here around the recoil. And then there's a couple in the plastic housing, and then there's two more on the top. There's quite a few screws on these things. It's just not necessary to have that many, but it is the design of it. Once you have all the screws loose, you don't need to take them out. All you need to do is just grab this cover, just wiggle it and take the whole thing off. Then all of your screws stay in place. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do here is the throttle cable, the mount is down in here. So what I need to do, and then you have this separate air box here. What I like to do is I like to take the screws off of this air box just so I can move it around and have a little more access. There's one on the top and one on the bottom. So now I can go ahead and wiggle this thing around. I got a little bit of play room and I can get in here to this mount. There is a zip tie on this harness. You will need to cut it off. This one has not been replaced yet. It is still factory. So you just want to kind of get in here and undo these wires. Again, it's a little bit tight in here. The way they designed this made it, they made it really tight. So it is a little bit more difficult than other units. Next thing I'm gonna do is take this big screw out here that holds the clamp down. So the throttle clamp itself is two different plastic pieces. And then you've got your ground wires that go through the bolt. Next, what you can do is take a screwdriver and just pry this throttle cable up out of its holder on the body. Just pop it out of there. And then if the cable is not broken at the carburetor, you can go ahead and just slide that cable off the carburetor. And then there's a little wheel on the top of this air filter housing that the throttle cable goes around and just undo that. Now you can go ahead and pull that whole assembly out of the way and it's clear. Next what I'll do is I'll unbolt the throttle from the body itself as well. And then you just feed the wires through the frame. Now that that's out of the way, I'll go ahead and I'll show you how to replace the cable in this throttle arm itself. All right, so I got you up above. Now I got the housing ready to take apart here. What I'm gonna replace it with is just the throttle cable itself. It's the wiring and the cable. And then the plastic ends, it does come with these as well. I'll go ahead and I'll, there's the part number for it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this little housing off. You'll get lots of dirt all kinds of stuff in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this back through. Next on this end, you're gonna take these two screws off. Take the cover off and then these are garbage, you can throw them away. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and take the throttle wheel off. I call it the throttle wheel. And then this is where that cable broke off. You can see it here. It is something that's common. And now sometimes trying to get these things out now because the cable broke off and frayed, 
this can be a little bit of a headache to get out of here. Usually you can just take a screwdriver, push it through the other end. We'll throw that away. Now there's a little rubber piece on here that slides in. You're just gonna hold on to that, don't discard that. And then you're gonna go ahead and take the kill switch out of it. What I do is I just go ahead and cut those wires off to get it out of my way and I'll discard that. Next I'll pop the throttle cable out and then you can just go ahead and pull that whole assembly out. And now this is all trash. Next thing I'm gonna do is replace this end here. And there's two Phillips screws right here. You're just gonna pull those out. And then this other half of the handle, of course, you can throw away as well. And I'll get the new cable out. So usually what I'll do is I'll just blow this out real quick. Just to make sure it's all clean. And then what I like to do on this new cable is I like to, on this end that's a 45 with the nut on it, just go ahead and push that cable all the way down. And then I like to push the wires in as well. So it looks like that. And then everything's just out here on the other end, just hanging. So what I'll do to feed this thing through there, you got to feed it through this handle. And you can't really feed it through with the throttle or with the uh, kill switch end of it because it doesn't fit through the housing. So what I do is I just take this and then I take this handle and then I bend it. Just give it a little bit of a bend. Then I'll put those wires in, the cable and the wiring and everything inside the tube. And then basically I'm just trying to match that bend to that throttle. And then as it's pushing down, I just go ahead and straighten it back out and then that pops right back through the handle. And now I can just go ahead and start feeding the rest of the wiring through there. Sometimes this can be a little tedious as well. Just take your time. Get that one through. Pull that one through. Now I just want to get that uh, sheeting through here too as well. Get that pulled through. Okay. Now that I've got those pulled through, I can start getting this set up. So now what I can do is take the other, the new handle half. I'm going to go ahead and mount this with the two Phillips screws again. Those are really tight, so try not to strip the heads of the screws off. Now that those are in place, you can just take the throttle cable and you can push it into its holder, just like that. Now your kill switch, you have this copper plate on it and that goes down. You'll have to pull the wires back through the handle. And then the way these go on there is you have one wire, you have it in there position like this one wire go the wires kind of go around this post right here so one goes on one side one goes on the other side and now this kill switch about to push the little tabs in 
first and it slides and it locks into place and it should look just like that. Try to get a couple different angles on here for you. Okay. And then the loose end of the cable can just go through. And now you can attach your cable to the thumb wheel, the throttle itself. It just slides into the slot and just pull it through. Now on these, there's two uh, straight castings right here and then you have the round part. And then on the other end of this, this is flat too. And then you wanna make sure your kill switch is in that position. And then you're gonna go ahead and slide this on there. You may have to rotate this piece. And then what that does is it slides down in there and you have that orange post that actually contacts the kill switch itself. I'll try to twist this so you can see it. Like that, you can see how the kill switch is operating. So you just want to make sure that that little piece there, that nub, if you will, is in the proper position. And then you're going to go ahead and position this this way as well. So when that cover goes over this, these two flat spots go in the other, sa in the other side right here and right here. So this is all set up. Now this is done. I can put the cap on this after I put the rubber piece on. I forgot about that. Now this little rubber piece is just a little insulator. And that piece will just go right on here. Just like that. Just remember the dirty end of it basically goes to the inside and the clean end is always on the outside because your hand is always on it. So now that that's set, I can put the cap on. So you just take this, sandwich it down and before you put the screws on make sure that your gap is gone make sure it's sealed all the way around sometimes you might have to wiggle it back and forth just a little bit to get it to snap down so everything is seated in position then you can put your two screws on You don't have to tighten those very tight. Next, what I'll do is I'll take the cable and the wiring and you're gonna put it through the handle, through the eyelid of the handle, like that. And then I like to pull this uh, split loom basically all the way out. Next, what I'll do. Now, that does come with this little piece inside the handle. You don't have to ha put it back on there if you can get it back on there, that's fine. Basically, it just positions that, uh, just puts a little bit of tension on this, on the cable to keep everything in place. But it's not something that's 100% necessary. Now that that slid over there like that, you got your split loom out, make sure your loom is out and your wires are ready to go. And there you go, there's the complete handle. This is ready to assemble. So now let me reposition the camera and I'll set you up back over the blower again. Okay, we're back over the blower again. So now this is the part that can be a little bit tedious is trying to put this stuff back together again. I'm just gonna blow this off real quick. All right, so now take your complete throttle assembly what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it through the frame, the throttle and all the wiring, right to the center, there's a hole. And then you're gonna pull this up. And then you can go ahead and just screw this thing back into place. You don't have to tighten it right now, just wait. Next, what I'm gonna do is I like to put these throttle cables, the nut for these throttle cables, uh, part way up just a few turns you don't want to bottom it all the way out and then you won't get because otherwise you won't get full throttle 
The bad thing about these Echo 770 throttle cables is this is your only adjustment. There's no other adjustment. So I like to put it about there. And then what I'll do is I'll just take this throttle cable itself, pull it underneath the air box. Try to do this without blocking your view. Go ahead and put the throttle cable in its position. Just set it in there. And once that's set in there, then I'll take the cable and there's a little wheel. You want to put it around that little guide wheel. And then you can hook it up to your throttle throttle uh, throttle barrel itself on the carburetor. Now, once you got that hooked up, and, and to do this also, you can take the gas tank off as well and kind of flop it up out of the way. It does make it a little bit easier to get in here to mess with all these wires and the clamp and all that stuff. Um, again, it is a little bit tight and it is a little bit tedious in here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hook up, start hooking up the wiring. I'll go ahead and plug this one in. The one bullet connector goes to the red wire. And now you've got two different ground cables here. So you gotta put those together. And then your two plastic pieces. This one goes down first, the bigger one. And then this is the smaller one, which is the top cap piece. So when these are together, they should look like this. They should be together like that. And then that goes down. Now, this new design, the, th the fuel line actually goes through this hole here on these. I do not put the fuel line through back through this. I just don't do it. One thing is with these fuel lines that I don't like is it's more of a Tigon style fuel line and I've seen a lot of problems with these fuel lines. So basically to, it helps me to eliminate a lot of frustration trying to hold all this stuff into place while I'm putting it back together again. And then a lot of times I end up replacing these fuel lines when these blowers are not very old as well. One more note to mention on this fuel line as I'm editing it. One thing that we run into is when the fuel line is mounted to the volute um, and then you have the fuel tank on the frame, you have that movement between the two. We found that that movement is actually pulling on that fuel line causing damage as well. So that's another reason I do not put it back in the holder. So what you do is you can take this top cap now you're going to put the wires through the screw first and this is the longer one it's got a little bit of a shoulder to it and this is the one that holds the throttle cable down so you're going to go ahead and put the ground wires on the bolt itself first and then you're going to take the top cap piece and you're going to put that on Next, you're gonna go ahead and take the bottom piece and you're gonna put it on as well. And then what you're gonna do is now you're gonna to try to get in here with your hands. I know I'm completely probably blocking your view and I apologize for that. But now you gotta get in here and you've gotta clamp all this down. Now there's a groove in here that the wiring sits inside of. And you wanna make sure that wiring is in that groove. And then you kinda of have to just fight everything to get it out of your way. And like I said, this is a little bit easier if you take the gas tank off. And go ahead and just get that bolt started. 
and then you can go ahead and try to maneuver everything else around. Once you get that bolt started, then you can kind of get everything in position, double check everything, make sure everything's where it's supposed to be. So now that I know I've got everything in position, the wires are on, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this screw down. You don't have to tighten it very tight. Now you can go ahead and clean up your wiring a little bit. Just make sure everything's out of the way. Now another thing with the wiring, one thing that I don't do, another thing that I don't do is I don't zip tie all of this wiring to the throttle cable like it is from the factory. One thing that I have noticed over the years is when you have all that wiring clamped together super tight around that throttle cable, with the vibration and everything, what it does is it wears through all of the uh, the sheeting on the wire and then it'll ground itself out and then it'll cause all kinds of cutting out issues and whatnot. I see that with Red Max. I see it with a lot of different manufacturers. So I just like to let the wires basically just float free in here. And then that usually eliminates that chafing problem. So the next thing I've got that on there, I know I've got my throttle on here on the carburetor. I'm looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and put these two screws back in the air in the uh, air filter base. One on the top, one on the bottom. Okay, and now while it's still sitting here, I'm gonna go ahead and check my throttle to make sure that it's operating properly. And I wanna make sure that this thing is getting full throttle at the carburetor right here. So that looks good. And it's going, and it's returning and actually touching the idle screw itself. So that way I know I've got good throttle position. You want to make sure that it's just getting the full stroke. And if you need to, you'll have to go back in here and take this all back apart and adjust the nut accordingly to whichever way you may need to go. Now I'll go ahead and just tighten up this hip throttle. Just snug it down so it's still got a little bit of movement. But it's snug. There you go. All right. So now that I've got all that done, everything is done. So all I need to do is just put the cover back on it and then I can go ahead and test run it. So now the cover, you can go ahead, like I said, you just leave all the screws inside the cover and go ahead and slide it over. What I do is I pull the recoil out, drop this cover down and I'll kind of tap it like this to get it into position. And then you'll have to check on this side over here to make sure that it's sliding into the housing properly. These things can be a little bit frustrating as well. And then as I'm releasing the recoil, I just tap it so then all the recoil pawls and everything settle into place. And then I'll double check on this side over here to make sure that it's flush and everything's in position, everything looks good. And all my screws stayed in position. So now I can go ahead and tighten it. I like to tighten, start from the middle and work my way out. And there you go. So let me go ahead and fire this thing up and test it, make sure it's working properly. Looks like this recoil's a little bit sticky. The test run came out okay. Everything work is working properly. I just put the air cleaner and cover back on it. If you've never replaced one of these yourself, you can do it yourself at home. Just take your time and do it step by step. And if you need to, go ahead and take a video of everything or take some pictures before you take it apart. That way you remember exactly how it goes back together again. And again, you can take the gas tank off if you prefer to give yourself a little bit more room. Working conditions in there, it is a little bit tight. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. 
or you can reach out to me via email in the community tab. I've left my email address in there for you as well. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for your time, and I'll see you on the next one.